Chiropractic, is there really any evidence? This is a question that seems to have been asked a lot lately. So what's the truth? Now, just before we get into it, I have a confession to make. I am a chiropractor. So you can imagine what my personal opinion is. But this video is not about my personal opinion. It's about the evidence. What does the research actually say? Well, that's where it gets interesting. There have been lots of claims made lately in the media about chiropractors, what they can and can't treat, and what they can and can't say. In particular, I keep hearing the claim that there's no evidence that chiropractic can treat anything other than back pain, neck pain, and other musculoskeletal problems. Now that part's not in question. There's plenty of well-accepted scientific evidence that chiropractic can be very effective for those types of conditions. But chiropractors have long maintained that chiropractic care actually does much more than that. By adjusting the spine and other joints and tissues of the body, we influence the health and function of the nervous system. And that's a big deal because the nervous system controls and coordinates the function of every single cell in the body. Chiropractic doesn't actually claim to treat any specific condition as such, but there have been many, many reports of various conditions improving under chiropractic care. That's certainly worth considering, but it's anecdotal, not acceptable scientific proof. Here's where it gets even more interesting though. There may be no accepted high level evidence that chiropractic care improves specific conditions, but that's not the same thing as there being no evidence at all. Let me explain. In scientific terms, there are certain criteria that must be met for evidence to be considered high level. For example, a simple series of case studies while valid, is only considered low-level evidence. Interesting, but not scientific proof. The same can be said of most single studies, unless they are exceptionally large and well-designed. In fact, much of the research evidence for many medical procedures and treatments commonly in use today doesn't actually meet this standard. But that's a whole other conversation. The gold standard in scientific studies is often considered to be a meta-analysis which is a review of a number of well-designed studies to reach an overall conclusion. In many areas, chiropractic, at least for non-musculoskeletal conditions, is lacking any meta-analysis support because there aren't enough large or well-accepted studies in any one area to reach this level of certainty. I believe this will come in time, but studies are extremely expensive and take a lot of time. To give you an idea of the difference in dollars involved in medical versus chiropractic research, consider this quote by Dr. Anthony Rosner. Even more remarkable is the efficiency of chiropractic research. When compared to the NIH budget of nearly $20 billion, the $10 million investment in federal funds is substantially less than a tenth of 1%, which makes it less than a rounding error. In other words, the UK government, like most other governments, spends 2,000 times the amount on medical studies that it does on chiropractic studies each year. And that doesn't even take into account the staggering amount of money that is spent annually by the pharmaceutical companies. Chiropractic simply doesn't have anything like the budget to compare, yet we are adding more research evidence every year. The final proof isn't there yet, but it's certainly mounting in many areas. But more about that in a minute. The other type of study that is considered gold standard is called a double-blind randomized control trial. This is considered a very rigorous type of study that carries a lot of weight. The difficulty with these studies when it comes to chiropractic is the double-blind part. This means that neither the patient nor the researcher knows whether a particular individual is receiving the real treatment or a fake treatment known as the control. This is very easy to do with a drug trial where the real pill and the fake pill can look identical. However, it's tricky with a hands-on treatment like chiropractic. The treating chiropractor always knows whether they're delivering the real treatment. For this reason, chiropractic is generally not supported by high-level double-blind randomized control trial evidence. But remember, no high-level evidence is not the same thing as no evidence. Let's take one example that's generating lots of controversy at the moment, the treatment of children with chiropractic care. There are actually many different published studies relating to many different areas of this argument, 
but for our purposes, let's just focus on one specific issue, treating colic. In 2007 in the UK, a study was conducted to assess the effectiveness of treating excessively crying or colicky babies with chiropractic. This was a single blind, randomised control study, so the parents didn't know whether their baby was receiving the real treatment or not. Of course, the treating chiropractor did know, hence it was only single blind. 104 babies were randomly divided into three groups. One group received chiropractic care, and their parents knew it. Another group also received chiropractic, but the parents didn't know whether they did or not. The third group, the control group, received no care. The outcome of the study showed that both groups of babies who received chiropractic care improved significantly, crying, on average, two hours less per day. Interestingly, there was no difference between the babies of the parents who knew they were receiving care and the babies of the parents who didn't, suggesting that it wasn't the bias of the parents that affected the outcome. This supports a number of previous studies which had similar findings, although they had been criticised because the parents were not blinded, which could have possibly led to bias. Overall, this study found that excessively crying babies were at least five times as likely to cry significantly less if they received care compared to not receiving care. When I searched for published studies involving chiropractic care and colic, I found 18 other studies published in medical journals ranging from simple case study series through to randomised control trials like the one I described earlier, and even a systematic literature review. So does this constitute proof that chiropractic can treat colic? Perhaps not at this stage, but it certainly isn't true to claim that there is no evidence. I'd say there's enough there to at least justify opening an honest dialogue about this issue. Surely further investigation is warranted. I'm certainly not aware of any proof that chiropractic care doesn't help colic. Now talking about colic is just one specific example. I found a similar situation when I looked into several other conditions that I've recently heard claimed in the media to have no evidence. In Australia, the healthcare regulator, APRA, has a responsibility to protect the public from false and misleading claims and to ensure that they can make healthcare decisions based on valid evidence. This is obviously a good thing, but surely that doesn't mean that there can't be an honest and open dialogue about the current levels of evidence that do exist, even if they haven't reached the high level point yet. Every physician I know, both chiropractic and medical, truly wants the best for their patients. But it gets hard for them to make unbiased, evidence-informed decisions when special interest groups with their own agenda bombard the media and distort the public dialogue with misleading and incomplete claims such as there is no evidence. This does not serve patients' best interests. The dialogue should be based on facts, research, evidence and patient outcomes, not inflammatory, emotional and simply false blanket statements. Let's keep in mind that it's not about us versus them, it's about better results for patients and a healthier, happier population. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's helped you to understand the debate that's currently going on in the media and to make up your own mind based on the evidence or at least the small sample I've had time to present in this video. Hopefully it's given you some food for thought and helped you to make better, more informed decisions for your health and the health of your family.